In this video, I will be explaining the Bessemer process of manufacturing steel, along with its importance in history. Specifically, I will be covering the following concepts, important resources for creating steel, steel factories, the Bessemer process, benefits of the Bessemer process, how the Bessemer process led to steel today, and lastly, steel today. Let's start by talking about resources needed for creating steel. Coal and water were essential for making steel. Coal was mined and then burned to convert water into steam. Nearly all the machines in steel factories were powered by steam at the time. Coal was also used to heat up furnaces for steel manufacture. However, the most important resource overall was of course iron. Iron is a key reactant in the chemical reaction of making steel. It was commonly mined in drift mines and found in large quantities underground. Workers slaved away in harsh conditions and suffered from long hours. The iron they mined was carted out of the mines to collection facilities, where it was then shipped to places like steel factories. Here you can see I am recreating a steel factory. They were mainly constructed out of brick and stone, but were also held together by iron or steel. Steel factories were usually located near cities, which had its pros and cons. Being close to cities made the workers commute shorter, but these factories produced lots of smoke and therefore pollution that contaminated the city air. Now let me explain the Bessemer process of making steel. It was invented by Henry Bessemer and was the most efficient way of making quality steel at the time. There were seven major steps used to produce steel at the time. Three of these steps involved the Bessemer converter, which is what Henry Bessemer created. The main concept of the converter was to blow air through the molten iron inside in order to remove impurities. However, let me explain the entire process from start to finish of producing steel. Raw iron ore was transported into factories where it was then loaded into a furnace. This furnace melted the ore down into molten, impure iron. Next, the molten iron was poured into a ladle, which brought the liquid iron to another part of the factory. This is where the important step happened. The molten iron was poured into another structure called a Bessemer converter. Bessemer converters were used to purify steel. To start the conversion process, a blast of hot air was sent into the bottom of the converter. This step oxidized the impurities present in molten iron. Carbon was also oxidized and as a result created a flame at the top of the converter. After all the oxidized impurities were burned off, alloys were added. Once added to the purified iron, these alloys bonded with the iron and as a result created steel. A little more hot air was blown through the converter. After this step, the Bessemer converter then contained pure steel. Another ladle was then moved over to the converter. The converter was then tilted to allow the newly created molten steel to flow out into the ladle. Next, the ladle was moved to another part of the factory where it poured the steel into ingot molds. Eventually, these ingots hardened and cooled. Workers were then able to haul the ingots into storage areas where they were shipped out to be made into a variety of things. Moving on, there were many benefits to the Bessemer process. It was the first inexpensive way to mass produce steel before the creation of the open hearth furnace. Bessemer steel is also a great alternative to iron, as it could be made extremely quickly. Before the Bessemer process was developed, it cost about $50 to make one ton of steel. But the Bessemer process brought the price down to around $9 per ton. This allowed steel to be used in mass quantities for construction, engineering, machines, and mining. Steel was also used in train tracks, which improved transportation and people's lives. It was also used in machinery for textile mills, mining, and power generation. Textile mills produced clothing and other similar products for people. On the other hand, mining produced iron and coal that was used to make steel. Steel improved machinery, allowing for other inventions to arise, along with better methods of making steel. The invention of Bessemer steel also affected people indirectly. Steel factory work gave thousands of people jobs, as well as caused new cities to develop around the factories. Because of the Bessemer process, steel became widely used and is now one of the most important materials we have today. Steel is essential to the world's industrial economy. Steel is also relatively light, yet extremely strong and durable, giving it loads of applications. Because of this, steel's main use today is for construction, specifically skyscrapers, stadiums, and many other types of buildings. As you have seen, the Bessemer process paved the way to the implementation and mass production of modern day steel. Without Henry Bessemer and his converter, it would be hard to see the world as it is today.